There's been a huge debate amongst the plant-based community on whether or not we should take preformed EPA and DHA algae omega-3 supplements, with Dr. Michael Clapper sharing worrying results that led him to start taking them. I have to be honest, there seems to be compelling evidence on both sides of the debate, which can make it hard to make a decision. But a brand new piece of research has just been released that has uncovered something critically important and sort of debunks some widespread assumptions we'd previously had. So we need to take a look at it. And the reason why the decision feels so vital to get right is that previous research has suggested that EPA and DHA may be critical determinants of cardiovascular health, inflammation and brain function. And it's this last one that I think worries Dr. Michael Greger, which is why he encourages his viewers to consider taking 250 milligrams of algae omega-3 a day, as low levels appear to be associated with a higher risk of age-related cognitive decline, memory issues and neurodegenerative disorders disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Now our previous understanding before this new research was released was that EPA and DHA can be made from ALA but that the conversion was found to be limited and influenced by multiple metabolic and dietary factors. ALA is found in things like flax seeds, walnuts and chia seeds, but some plant-based diets are also high in linoleic acid, an omega-6 fatty acid that competes with ALA for the same enzymes, potentially limiting the conversion of ALA into EPA and DHA. But then came along this new research. Make sure to stay till the end as I also discuss the limitations of the study. Scientists took 168 participants and categorised them into four dietary patterns. A Western diet, so omnivores, flexitarians, vegetarians and vegans. The intervention lasted 12 months and provided participants with menu plans designed to maintain a favourable omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Then, from the third month until the twelfth month, participants received daily flaxseed oil supplementation, providing approximately 3 grams of ALA, which is the equivalent found in 2 tablespoons of ground flax or ground chia seeds. Fatty acid profiles were assessed in both blood plasma and erythrocyte, red blood cell membranes every 3 months. And the goal was to see whether a sustained intake of flaxseed oil alongside a nutrient-optimised diet could improve long-chain omega-3 status, especially in individuals who don't consume fish. And here's what the research has found. As expected, ALA levels increased across all diet groups by roughly 22 to 38 percent relative to baseline. But more importantly, long-chain omega-3 metabolites also rose significantly. EPA increased by 27.3 to 41%, DPA by 27.2 to 40.7%, and DHA by 13 to 26% across the different dietary patterns. And vegans who started with the lowest EPA and DPA levels showed the largest relative increases. However, their absolute concentrations remained lower than those of omnivores and flexitarians. Their relative increase was smaller for DHA than for EPA and DPA, but the increase was described as moderate. Basically, relative change is how much something went up compared to where it started, and absolute concentrations is the actual total amount in the body. Another important finding was that providing ALA within a diet that had good omega-6 to omega-3 ratio helped the converting enzymes to operate well, so that the longer chains could be created. Okay, so what's so groundbreaking about this research? Well, it sort of debunks the widespread assumption that our body only poorly converts plant-derived ALA into long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, as it provides good long-term evidence that ALA from things like flaxseed and walnuts can be converted into what's called biologically relevant long-chain omega-3 fatty acids to a greater extent than we ever thought, especially when the omega-6 to 3 ratio is kept in check. So what should our omega-6 to 3 ratio be? Well, many Western diets are often 15 to 1, with experts saying we actually should be aiming more for 2 to 1 or even 1 to 1 to keep inflammation in check. But while flaxseed oil supplementation substantially improved omega-3 status across all dietary patterns, it didn't eliminate the huge differences seen in EPA and DHA levels between vegans and omnivores. And one expert looking at the study said, quote, to compensate for the absence of marine sources like fish, vegetarians and vegans are therefore advised to combine regular intake of ALA-rich foods such as flaxseed and walnuts with algae-derived EPA and DHA supplements to achieve adequate long-chain omega-3 intake. Now, it's really important to note that there were several limitations to the study. 
Firstly, there was no control group. Secondly, every participant received optimised menus plus ALA supplementation, so it's hard to isolate the specific effects of ALA from other dietary changes. And although menu plans and flaxseed oil were provided and compliance was encouraged, actual adherence depended on participant motivation and self-report, which can introduce reporting bias. Also, the study measured changes in fatty acid profiles, not direct clinical health outcomes. So we don't know what the changes in this EPA and DHA status actually means for inflammation, cognition, cardiovascular disease or metabolic health in this context. The authors highlighted that they cannot conclude on these health effects based on their data. And finally, I wonder what more than three grams of ALA a day could achieve because the study couldn't describe dose response relationships i.e. what happens with lower or higher ALA intake. So I'd love to see a future trial with multiple doses and more controlled diets. However, I still have the study conclusions ringing in my ears that said, quote, to counteract the absence of dietary EPA, DPA and DHA, typically obtained from fish, vegetarians and vegans are advised to regularly consume walnuts, flax, chia and hemp seeds as source of ALA in combination with EPA or DHA rich microalgae oil to improve their long-term supply of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids. But what do two top plant-based neurologists who specialise in Alzheimer's disease have to say about omega-3 supplements? Well, we'll look at that next. To view that video, you can click the middle of the screen now, but it will also be pinned to the top of the comments below.